OK, so now on to a word problem that is going to kind of help us uh, with our polynomials and at least kind of understand, again, a little bit more of the extrema as well as the x-intercept. So kind of putting everything together that we have learned so far into a nice little word problem. Um, so on this one, uh, it's basically saying that you're starting a company uh, that is growing and selling 6,000 shirts per month. Good job. And you're selling them for $16. But upon some market research that you um, learn that with every dollar increase in the number of shirts sold, um, the number that you're going to sell is it drops by 100 So $16, you know, a decent amount for, you know, a t-shirt, depending on, you know, where you live or your style or taste um, or what kind of quality you're looking for. But what you realize is, you know, you can increase that if you increase that, um, less people are going to buy, right? That's kind of a little, you know, supply and, uh, supply and demand uh, that you're going to kind of have. So, you know, less more expensive it is, you know, probably less people are going to buy, but you can charge more for it. So what that's going to do is let's look at a revenue model. Now, again, this example is just taking into account, you know, revenue. We're not going to be talking about expenses or anything actually calculated. It's a very simplistic um, problem. So the first example is saying just write a, write a function r of x that models the revenue of the company, revenue is being money that you're bringing in, um, where x represents the number of price increases. Now before I even get to modeling, because I know modeling you know, can get students very confused and some of you might not even know where to start here. Uh, I think the best thing is to, to kind of understand here what we are working with first of all. So you know, revenue is money that you're bringing in. So let's just go in with where your, let's just start with where your company is at this moment, okay? So at this moment, you're selling 6,000 shirts uh, per month for $16. So let's just say that is your revenue. I'm actually gonna bring this in one more time. So we'll say R of X equals, and let's just kind of see how much that is. Uh, 6,000 times, uh, what did I say, $16? Yeah, $16. And so if you notice, what we're doing to find the revenue is I'm multiplying, the, by the, I'm multiplying basically two things, the number of shirts times the cost. Oops. All right, so to find, uh, or how much we, not really, the, you know, yeah, the cost, or how much I'm charging, how much I'm earning per shirt, right? So, um, because usually costs you're thinking of like expenses and stuff like that, but this is basically what you're bringing in per shirt. Um, so therefore, when I go ahead and multiply this, now I did go ahead and use a calculator just to save um, time with this, but you can obviously go ahead and check your check my work. You can see that I'm bringing in ninety six thousand dollars. Okay, when you multiply six thousand times sixteen, that's ninety six thousand. I guess I probably could have multiplied that on my own, but whatever. <laughs> Um, but anyways, that's you know good amount, right? Especially for like a month of selling. Now, obviously, you have expenses and blah blah blah. But you know, for here, we're just looking at that. That's a good amount of money. Now, let's just look at an example here. What if I'm going to? Let's just do another price. Let's do a price increase. Let's say if I do one price increase, that means this has now been based on this problem. I am now going to be reducing the number that I sold by a hundred, but I'm going to be able to increase this by you know a dollar. So therefore. I would have sold only 5,900 times 17. Now this one, I would not want to multiply in my head. I guess I probably could figure it out if I wanted to, but I don't even want to try to figure it out because I did the math using the calculator because the calculator was afforded to me. So I'm going to utilize the calculator. And I get 100,300. So by increasing the amount, even though we sold less, by increasing the price, we earned more revenue. And you know, you're thinking as a business, well, that's good, right? I want to earn as much revenue as possible. Then I can either you know, give back or I can reinvest in my company. I can hire more workers. I can keep on building it up. So that's good. Um, let's look at this one more time just to kind of see what happens uh, after this and then kind of look at some patterns that we kind of notice. So let's do one more decrease uh, or one more price increase, I'm sorry, I should say. So if we increase it now to $18, that's a price of $2. $2. Therefore, now I'm going to drop by 200 and when I, oops, I forgot my dollar sign. When I multiply 5,800 times 18, I ended up getting even more money, 104,400. Now, on the, on the onset, just by looking at these, say, well, if I keep on increasing, you know, the char how much I'm going to charge, uh, I'm going to make more money. And, you know, that, that's what we can kind of see here. However, intuitively, you know, hopefully we should come to the, um, to the idea that, 
well, if we keep on raising the price, eventually we're not going to have anybody that's going to buy the shirt, right? So there's this point where there's a maximum value that we can charge the shirt for where the most amount of people are going to buy it. Because if we keep on raising it, you know, for instance, you know, if I raise this, um, you know, $60 and I'm selling an $80 shirt, you know, I'm not going to have enough people that are going to buy it that's going to equal, you know, this amount. And also, if we kind of like look at another way to kind of look at this, is let's look at the difference. Actually, I like pink. Let's look at the difference here between 96,000 and 100,300. If you look at the difference here, the difference, the price increase was 4,300, right? Now, if we look at the price increase from 100,300 to 104,400, you can see that the price increase is 4,100. So even though the price is increasing each and every time, you can see that the rate at which it is increasing is actually decreasing, right? Um, and so eventually, you know, we see that that is going to keep on decreasing where it's not going to, it's going to give us, um, where we're not going to have any more, it's not going to be, uh, what's the thing, advantageous for us to keep on increasing the price because our, our model that we need to create is something that is going to, uh, met or, well, we didn't, Really want to say, but here it gets down to we want to be able to maximize the revenue, right? We want to, you know, we want to be able to find that maximum value. That's what I kind of talk about there. But we just want right now, we just want to be able to idea to, you know, represent this function. So now we kind of have a little bit of context. Um, let's go into really understanding what this function that we're going to write is going to represent. So R of X represents the money that we're bringing in. Again, basically think about this as uh, X equals the shirts and then the cost of each shirt. So we're basically multiplying them to get the revenue. So when we're going to create this model, we are going to have a product of shirts times cost and where X represents the price um, increase, the number, sorry, the number of price increase. So a lot of times when we're doing this, um, I like to define my variables. Now in this problem, I already defined the variables, but sometimes you'll get a word problem where they don't tell you what everything represents. So you need to do that on your own. So I'm just going to get good practice and just rep represent things. So R of X rep represents the revenue. Okay. And then X represents the number of price increases. Um, number of, well, let's say, um, yeah, number of, yeah, price increases. Okay, so let's look at again what R of X. R of X is basically the uh, number of shirts that you're gonna sell. And then instead of cost, I'm going to say what their price is. Okay, because um, that's really what it's not really cost. It's the you know price that you're getting because you're getting that. It's not a cost. It's not a negative. It's a positive. All right. Um, so the number of shirts that we sell. So let's see if we can represent this with the variable x. So the number of shirts I sell every single time that I do a price increase, every time I you know take an x, I am losing 100. Right. So you know for instance. When we did one price increase, I was at 5,900. When I was at two increases, I was at 5,800. So how can we model going from 6,000 to 59 to 58 to the next one will be 57? You can see that each time we do a price increase, we are subtracting 100. So what I can do to represent that is say, well, let's look at trying to represent a, a rule for that. So if we start off with 6,000 shirts, and then every single time I decrease, I'm going to subtract 100. So 100. If I do one price increase, I'm subtracting 100. If x is 2, then 2 times 100 is 200. I'm going to be subtracting 200 and 300 and so on and so forth. Okay. Now let's look at the price. So as we noticed, the rule for the price was 16, 17, 18. So every price increase, it's going up a dollar. So my price is going to start at 16, and then I'm going to add you know, basically a dollar times how many price increases I have, which would just be, you know, X. Like if it's do one price increase, that's one dollar. Two price increases, that's two times one, which is two dollars. So one represents really the price increase. 16 represents the, I guess I could put in my dollar signs. So 16 represents your initial price, plus one represents the price increase, and X represents the number of, the number of, number of, 
price increases, where 6,000 represents the number of shirts initially sold, 100 represents the decrease in, in shirts sold, and X represents the, obviously, each time you do a price increase. So that is going to be our function. Now, you could multiply that out, but I don't really want to. So there's really no, you know, um, benefit to it. Obviously, if we wanted to find like the end behavior, you know, it might be a little helpful. But then again, we can just use what we worked on in this show. So, you know, there's really nothing else we can do. We can keep it in that format. So that's fine. Um, and then the next one says graph R of X and determine the maximum revenue as well as the optimal price of increases. So actually optimal number of price increases. So what we're looking to do is saying, all right, well, how many you know, price increases? Should I increase the price 20 times? Should I increase it 100 times? Like what should be, how many times should I increase the price of the shirt as well as to determine what is going to be the price? So let's go ahead and take a look at this graph. Uh-oh. I forgot to change this over. So sorry about that. Let's move that over here. So there's the graph. All right. Now I have just a standard window here. And so when I graph this, you can see that the, you know, if I graph it, don't graph it. Okay, it's graphed. So something is, you know, it's not showing up. Now, before I even get into this, let's kind of like think about this. And this actually even hijacks, um, I probably should have rearranged these. I'll probably switch these around into the problem. But let's look at the domain and range, because I think that's kind of like important here. And actually, we'll come back to this, but let's look at the domain. So we're talking about the number of you know price increases. Well, X is going to be your domain, right? So that number of price increases. So we're not going to have any like negative you know pricing. We're not like going down. That's not what we are investigating. We're looking at raising the price. So obviously, our domain, we could have no price increases. So our domain is going to be from zero. And then how many price increases could we have? Well, you can see that there's like a maximum number of price increases, right? Eventually, the number of price increases that we have, if we keep on reducing this, you know, by um, if we keep on reducing this, then eventually we're going to get to zero, right? So there's only so many uh, price increases, and that we eventually can have, and we'll kind of get to that. Um, we'll look at the graph and kind of see, you know, how that makes sense again. But right now, I know that my minimum value is going to be zero. This is for the uh, domain. So I do know what my maximum value, but I want to use the graph to kind of look at it. Now let's go and take a look at the range, and let's kind of make some things that make sense on the range. The range, obviously the minimum value is going to be your revenue, right? So and when we're looking at the you know, maximum revenue, you could keep on increasing this until, yeah, literally you're you know, making you know, barely any money. But you know, there's going to be some minimum values um, for your range. But we obviously know that your revenue is not going to go you know, negative. You can keep on raising the price until you have zero people buying, right? And then eventually that's going to be the lowest amount. But you know, since we're not dealing with cost, the minimum value of our range is going to be zero. Now, let's kind of think about this as far as our maximum value. We kind of kept on getting up higher and higher um, to 104,000, but it's decreasing, right? So I wouldn't say that it's going to go up to a million. And the reason why I bring this up is, when I want to go ahead and create my you know, table, and it doesn't matter if you're working with like a TI calculator um, or a TI calculator or just even with uh, Desmos. Come on. Okay, so even when you're working with uh, Desmos. When we go and take a look at this graph, what you can see here, uh, right, let's, let's go ahead and change the axis. So the x-axis, I'm going to want to go from 0. And let's go ahead and just go to 100, see what that works out with. Right? Without doing any math, let's just go with 100. Oh, it looks like 60. Hmm, interesting. And y-axis, let's go to 0. And then let's go to 120,000. There we go. Beautiful. So now what you can see is we have this nice little curve with no price increases, right? Let's see if I can get that. Now, a lot of times to visually kind of like 
see the graph or see some of these points, um, I think it's helpful to understand that the graph is going to continue to the left of zero and below zero for the y-axis. But those values aren't really anything that we're going to be looking at. But for just instructional purposes, I'm going to take this to a negative 10 just so I can see those points and take this to like negative uh, 20,000 or 10,000. There you go. Just so we can kind of see the points. Why don't you work on that? There you go. Okay, so let's go back into our original points, you know, 0, 9, 600, right? And what you can see here is it keeps on the price or the revenue that we're bringing in is increasing, 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 increasing until eventually we get to a maximum value. And you can see that the maximum number is 22 price increases, right? Because remember, X represents the um, price increases. And the maximum revenue is going to be 144,400. Okay? And then the other thing that I want to bring into is notice how that's the maximum. Now it continues. What it says is if you do 60 price changes, you're going to not make any money. And let's say, well, you know, why? How, how does that, you know, why does that make sense? Well, think about it going back to this, you know, problem here. If you make 60 price changes, that means you're going to keep on losing 100 people, right? So 60 times 100 is 6,000. So if you do 60 price changes, you just, you know, basically lost all of your customers. So we can see here the range is going to be 0 to uh, 60. And the range here, all right, the range is obviously going to be the maximum value, right? You can see that that graph is bounded. It doesn't go any higher than that. So the range in this example is going to be from 0 to 144,000. Okay, now it says determine the maximum revenue. So the, let's just write this out, you know, the max rev anew is 144,000, all right, and 400. The optimal number of price changes is 22 and what is going to be the you know cost like what would be the optimal cost I don't know or the optimal price um, and I didn't ask this but I should have so the optimal price that's going to bring you the um, I don't know why I put a P in there the optimal price of a cert so if we do 22 price changes it started it's 26 um, therefore that's on price of a shirt is going to be $38. Hmm, pretty cool, huh? I like that. So $38, which, yeah, it's a little higher end, you know, and, and obviously to sell a $38 shirt, you're probably going to have to, you know, change probably some of the quality of the shirt um, and maybe some marketing and stuff like that that you're doing. But, you know, that's not anything crazy. I've, you know, hear people spending a lot more money on, you know, t-shirts, um, you know, and everybody has their taste and, and what they're spending things on. But, the idea is for you to, you know, kind of see that when you increase, you know, when we're increasing this revenue, but we're losing the amount of people, there's going to be that maximum value. And that's the absolute maximum, which again, obviously restricts our range. And then obviously we have a restricted domain, which is something that we have talked about as far as like the implied domain compared to the restriction domain. It makes sense that the domain for price increase is going to be between, you know, zero and 60. So this is just a nice little word problem to kind of practice our um, practice our modeling skills, as well as to kind of understand again the the x inter the x and y intercepts. The y intercept is our initial condition, no price increases, or our initial no increases. So you're selling, you know, uh, six thousand shirts for sixteen dollars, and then the x intercept is saying sixty price increases. So you're not making any money because you've lost all your customers. Um, and then also looking at the domain and range and everything from there. So um, hopefully that kind of helped you out with your study. And now we'll kind of work into the intermediate value theorem.